Hey guys, I'm Graham. I wanted to do this video to give you a little bit of a background as to why I chose to use an endurance laser on my CNC router. About 12 months ago, I decided I needed some more enhancements to the normal routing that I did with this machine, which was acrylics and wood and aluminium. I could see the benefits of having a laser attached to it would give me in engraving and wood and the like. So I went out and I purchased a Chinese laser off eBay. Now that was okay. I fitted it, I got it working, I was able to do some, some of the basic background requirements, but it failed, it never lived up to what it should have lived up to, it didn't do what it should have done, and it completely disillusioned me. So I did some research because I knew there must be something better out there, and I came across Endurance. Well, I was amazed by the support that they have via their YouTube channel, via their Facebook page, via their website. So I was inspired enough that I said, okay, I'll go and do it. And I purchased this, an eight watt endurance laser module. It arrived and literally within 24 hours, I had it running on my machine. And uh, I can tell you, it lived up to everything I expected of it. I was just blown away. So. Once I did that, I decided I would then run some tests and um, I've never looked back since. So I, what I'm making this video to show you just how I attached the endurance laser to my CNC router, some of the components involved and the methods in doing that. But I apologize that this, it's not a tutorial of all the technical details, it's just something to let you know and show you what's possible and what can be done with what is fundamentally a homemade CNC router now able to have a laser attached to it when I need to do those jobs and those projects that would benefit from having that. So thank you and I hope you enjoy the video. Under it, we have the control computer, which is Windows based. Next to that is the CNC controller for the closed loop stepper motors. Uh, then we've got my laser control box. Moving up here, we have the router itself, mostly constructed from aluminium with slide rails and ball screws, etc. purchased on eBay. This is just the back view of it. Z-axis, spindle motor is 2.2 kilowatt VFD and uh, that's the endurance laser module which I'll show you shortly how I fit. Next to it we have the computer screen which is Mac 3 and I know it doesn't look like a Mac 3 uh, screen to most of you but I customized my own Mac 3 screen, did all my own graphics and customized the buttons to suit um, this one particular is up here, the laser, and there is a separate screen for when I'm doing CNC routing. Below that, that's the VFD controller for the spindle motor. And here, down here, we have obviously my laser protection goggles and a step, a pendant for uh, manually controlling the XYZ motor positions and zeroing everything perfectly. Down here, we've got the Cyclone vacuum extraction system. Mostly that's required for when I'm normally routing acrylics and wood so that it basically separates and I don't get anywhere near the dust that I would normally get. The hose goes up over the ceiling and down here and is quite flexible. I use, also use the extraction system for when I'm doing laser work uh, for getting rid of the fumes. And I'll show you some details about that and how I do it very soon. A watt endurance laser module fitted to a bracket system, which allows me to attach it under my normal spindle. So I don't have to uh, remove everything. It's very quick. 
I put a small fan on the bottom just to add some airflow around the laser. And also I made a, an expansion ring for the focus to make it a little bit uh, easier. It's attached with uh, just a couple of screws and it fits, if I can do this with one hand and show you at the same time, it basically goes under, under the spindle, mounts up there, and there is an Allen screw which allows me to secure it. This is securing it. I only need to use one Allen screw. And then once I've got that done, I'm able to take the cables, run them through the top here, and I have this little aluminium bracket which keeps things nicely out of the way. This clip is so that uh, it, the laser module is earthed properly to make sure that you have the earthing, mostly because, because it's the bracket that it mounts to the spindle motor is anodized. Anodizing is an insulator, and without this manually earthing everything, um, it would not be uh, connected to the main um, earth of the machine. So around the back, I take these and they these two just literally plug into these two connectors um, and I'll secure those in more firmly later. Back down here, I've got my CNC controller that I uh, built, uh, power, main power switch. I have a uh, PWM manual control in it so that I can vary laser power from zero up to 100%. I find that the endurance laser will actually come on at around 1%. So um, I always leave it between you know, around around that lower level, just in case it actually comes on. Um, next to that, I've got uh, voltage and current. And uh, this switch here is the laser active switch. So right up until now, there's no 12 volts going to the laser itself. So it's completely unactivated. So no matter what the computer did, it wouldn't trigger the laser to come on. Once I turn that on, I've got the laser coming on. Now the green LED on this switch is also tied to the PWM so that as I wind the power up, it will actually go brighter and darker. So it's an indication that if that's completely off, there's no power. But the minute I even wind it up to just one or two percent, it, it comes up. So that's the control box. That's tied into the CNC controller for triggering, triggering the laser power on and off that is initiated by the Mac 3 software. What I do when I'm doing laser work, because normally I have a, what's called a spoil board on my CNC router, which is made from MDF, um, so that I don't burn the spoil board, I put a solid aluminium plate on top of that, so if the laser overruns, it won't do any damage to it. And then if I need to stand the work off, I use a couple of thin aluminium strips, and I've got more of these, which I can place depending on what the job happens to be. And uh, that's about uh, the machine itself. Some of you may have noticed and be wondering what the this screw is sticking down from the bottom of the laser mount. That's uh, my sensor, so I can constantly set the zero height z-axis to the focus point of the laser relative to the surface of the material that I'm uh, going to engrave or cut. Now, this is a uh, calibrated 10 millimeter plate that uh, is also used when I'm zeroing uh, normal CNC cutting tools and whatever. It's absolutely invaluable. And because I had this, I decided to uh, incorporate it into setting the laser height. So that's placed on the surface of the material. I then go up here to my Mac 3 controller and there's a button here that if I can get the pointer on it, which is auto set laser focus. So I click on that. I then go down here and you'll see that the Z axis is going down and it will touch the plate 
And once it's touched the plate, it will then reset and it is now exactly the height above the surface of the material that I want for focus. So it makes it very, very quick and easy for me to switch um, material and, uh, and refocus the laser. But more importantly, uh, when I'm doing normal CNC routing, I might have three or four tool changes per job and it makes it very quick for me to change the tool position. It's a, it's a standard uh, function of Mac 3. It's just a matter of incorporating it into it. This is the Mac 3 software that I use. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the custom uh, interface that I wrote for it. Uh, so if I go to hit the reset button now, which makes it everything active, and over here, I've incorporated a laser on and off button. This is a manual control for when I want to focus the laser or zero the laser onto the workpiece or whatever. So I hit the on, it'll come up with a warning to make sure that I know what I'm doing and that I've got the laser set at low power. Hit yes, we go quickly swing down here, you'll see that the laser is actually powered on, but it's only like about 2% so it's not actually going to burn anything. Coming back up here to the software I manually turn the laser off and I've got something loaded here just a quick uh, demo program. Now that I'm, I've got the laser all set, zero, everything's okay I just hit the start button and you'll see everything will come on and away it goes. Now, the laser, as again, the laser power is only set to like 2%, so it's not actually going to do anything. But this is the actual machine itself running. This switch on the side here is just to turn this little fan on if I need it. So there you go, you can see axis is moving. No movement naturally of the Z axis because everything is fixed and uh, that's the y-axis and back to the software. Also initiated automatically, you'll see this has got um, vacuum. That's uh, the fume extraction system and that's indicating that it is actually active at the moment, but I have it physically switched off, so it's not making any noise. Okay, so now the only other additional part is the hood that I made up, uh, which has some green acrylic to help filter out the laser a little bit, but it's not the proper uh, uh, coloured acrylic, so I still wear and would recommend still wearing goggles, but it just helps a little bit if I accidentally swing my head around and got a quick uh, glimpse of it without the goggles on. That uh, attaches like so to the endurance laser, and I've just got a little thumb screw here to secure it firmly. There's only a very small gap between that and the surface. It's probably, I think I've got it set to around about five millimeters at the most. Because the Z axis is not moving up and down, I don't have to worry about uh, any real clearance. Then what I do is I can attach my vacuum system to it. And if I can do this with one hand, get this screw done up, that will secure it on there properly. And, uh, and there you go. When the software is running and I have the vacuum system turned on, manually there, and I can show you with this uh, test button here just what it's like. So that's then now going to suck. Not all of the fumes at this point, but it's going to uh, remove a fair proportion of it. The downside is that it's really noisy, uh, but the upside is it doesn't smell really loud. Really and with the vacuum system, um, it blows the outside. Turning it on. Tom, One on. other point getting back to the laser controller that I built, apart from what I've covered already, which is the laser active button and the laser power PWM uh, percentage module works really well. On the side, there is an extra knob here, which allows me to 
initiate a delay from when Mac 3 tells the laser to turn on to when it actually does turn on. Now, when running some programs, you can get uh, spotting of the work where the, la the actual laser will turn on before the actual movement occurs. And this allows me to add a variable delay into that up to around about, I think it's about 150 milliseconds. Now, some jobs require it, some jobs don't require it. So I made it variable and added it on. And uh, with other people running different sorts of programs um, that are not Mac 3 based, uh, you won't have that problem. And I believe that Mac 4 doesn't have uh, this delay problem, but Mac 3 does, so I took some measures to try and help counteract that. In case you're wondering, to create my uh, jobs and generate the G-code, I use Vetric Aspire, the latest version. Uh, the two main points I wanted to make here were the fact that um, I'll select this particular job is the tool. When you're using Vetric Aspire to create a laser tool, at the moment you basically just create it as if it was a standard end mill, but you set up certain parameters that indicate to you that it's uh, a laser. So the first one is the name. So if I go laser 8 watts, uh, you can see I make a note here, but and the diameter is basically what I'm guessing the diameter of the laser beam to be, which is around about 0.1 millimeters. The, uh, the cutting depth, well, there is no real uh, depth associated because the z-axis is not actually moving. So I set it nominally to 0.01 millimetres. The step over, that can vary a little bit uh, depending on if you want to do, you know, multiple uh, sort of higher burns uh, with material. Uh, for wood, no, nah, you would set it at 100% step over. But for engraving anodized aluminium, I set it to about 75 to 50%. Uh, the other most important thing, of course, is the feed rate. Uh, for this particular one, it's 500 millimeters per minute. Uh, I can go, I, with my machine, I can take it up to uh, 1600 millimeters per minute. So I set up various tools uh, based on the jobs that I'm doing. Now, a lot of them are, are pretty much the same, but I just find it easier when I'm, say, engraving wood. I just go, oh, engraving wood or engraving aluminium. And I don't have to think, oh, now what speed did I use for that or what do I use for that? I've just got the name of the tool which indicates what I want, even though the parameters of most of these tools is pretty much the same. The only thing that varies is the step over occasionally and the, uh, the feed rate. So if I get out of that. Now, the main other point to, uh, to make is, if I uh, close, close that, um, is that when I'm going to create my G-code, I will tick that box there and I'll go to save uh, G-code for this particular job. Now, if I zoom in here, with uh, Vetric Aspire, you've got various post processes depending on what sort of job you're doing. So I can run a knife on mine for knife cutting, laser, mill, or pen if I wanted just to draw something. So for laser, I select laser here. I wrote this post processor so that it specifically does things like, doesn't move the z-axis. It knows what to do with turning the, uh, the vacuum extraction system on and off it knows what port to trigger the laser on and off. So that's very crucial. So now if I click save on that, it would save G code that actually suits uh, me doing laser work as you would have seen when I ran this program just a few minutes ago.